part 35 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to set an item selected when the drop-down list options are loaded from a database table. Please watch part 34 before proceeding. If you recollect from the previous session, these options within this drop-down list are loaded from this database table TBL department. Let's actually run the application. And notice that when the drop-down list renders, no department is selected by default. And let's say our project requirement is such that we want IT department to be selected by default. Then we can make use of this overloaded version of the select list constructor where we can pass the selected value as a fourth parameter. Now notice that the first parameter is the list of departments that we want to display within this drop-down list. The second parameter is the data value field, which is here the ID of the department. The third parameter is the data text field, which is nothing but the name of the department that is displayed within the drop-down list. And finally, this is nothing but the selected value that we want within the drop-down list. We are passing a value of 1, which is the ID of IT department. So let's make this change here. Notice that the moment I press comma, um, you know, look at that, IntelliSense shows me the fourth parameter is going to be the selected value. So let's go ahead and pass 1, which is the ID of IT department. Let's run this, and obviously when the page renders, you know, we should have IT department selected by default. Okay. But then, the downside of hard coding selected value like this in code is that the application code needs to be modified if we want HR department to be selected instead of IT department. So every time there is a change in requirement, we need to change our application code as well. So if this change is frequent, then probably driving the selection of this item within the drop-down list using a column in TBL department table would be much better. So in that case, we don't have to change the application code. All you need to do is update that column within the table TBL department. So obviously, uh, the first step here is to add a column to this table. So we're going to add this column called eSelected, and it's going to be of type bit, so either 0 or 1 or null. So if it is going to be 1, then we want that department to be selected. So let's go ahead and add that column first. Let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio. So here we are altering the table definition, TBL department, and we are adding this column is selected, which is of type bit. So let's select the data from TBL department. Notice that we have this column, but all the rows of this column will be null. So we want IT department to be selected. So let's issue an update query. So update TBL department set, we want to set is selected column to 1 where the ID of the department is equal to 1. So if you know if for a department if we have set ID I mean is selected to 1 then we want that department to be selected within the drop-down list. If it is null or if it is set to 0 then we don't want those department to be selected. Okay, so this is the first change. Obviously, since the table definition has changed, we need to update our data model as well. So we have our sample data model, uh, so we need to update this. So let's open that. And then let's right click on that. And then we can select this option, update model from database. And then click on this refresh button. So tab, so this is going to pull all the tables, views, and stored procedures that are available within this model. So we have this TBL department table. We want to update this. So let's click on Finish. Now within the database, we introduce this column, is selected. And notice that this is selected, if we actually check the properties of this prop, uh, properties of this property, is selected property, notice that it's a bit data type, meaning it's going to be either true or false. Okay, so now that's the second step. We need to update, I mean, refresh our ADO.NET entity data model so that we have a property for this third column is selected. 
and the final step is to change our index action method and look at this it's a pretty simple change what are we doing you know this line is unchanged sample db context this is going to establish a connection to our database and then look at this here we are creating a variable of type um, you know list of select list item objects because remember a drop down list is a collection of select list item objects and then what we are doing here we are looping through each department and then we are building a select list item object select list item object has got three properties text value and selected property text is going to be the name of the department value is going to be department id and selected if this property is set to true then that select list item will be selected within the drop down list okay and if you remember we want a department to be selected only if this column has got this value of 1 if it is null or if it is 0 then we don't want that row to be selected within the drop down list okay so since this is a bit data type um, in C sharp it's going to be boolean data type which is true or false so here notice that department dot is selected if that property has a value because you know since this column can be null here within this database table by default ADO.NET entity data model is going to generate this property as a nullable boolean property so we need to check if it has got a value if it has got a value then you know take that value it's going to be either true or false okay otherwise set it explicitly to false if there is if the value is null, if it doesn't have a value, then it's going to be null, in which case we want it for sure to be false. And then if it has got a value, it will either be 0 or 1. If it is 1, you know, this property will be true, is selected dot value will return true. If it is 0, is selected dot value is going to be false. Okay, so we are setting the selected property using this expression right here. And then what we are doing, we are adding that select list item object to our uh, list variable that we have here. And once we are done looping through each department, we are storing, you know, the select list item objects in within this view bag object with department's dynamic property. And the view code doesn't change; it stays the same. So let's actually copy this code and then paste that within our controller action method. So it's the same code that we just discussed. Okay, if I right click on this E selected and go to definition, this will be present in that auto generated file for us. Notice that it's a nullable Boolean property. So that's why it's very important to check whether if it has got a value. All right, with this change, let's actually go ahead and run this. So we have removed the hard coding within code right now. So the selection is going to be driven by the value that we have within the database. Notice that since we have a value of 1 for IT department, that will be selected. Now let's say we want uh, to have HR department selected instead of IT. All you need to do is set that to set 1 for 2, which is um, HR department, and then turn it to 0 for IT department. okay so HR department has got one now so now if we come and refresh this notice that HR department is selected by default all right on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day